live to viewers. 180 viewers ready to go. Looks like Adam Hicks Peak Design is awake. <laughs> um, all right, let's let this go for a second here. So we've got, do we have wash kits? Um, this is not a wash kit. Oh, our peer, we are yes. proud of you also. Uh, so I'm just going to talk for a second. And if you guys out there could chat and let us know if the audio sounds pretty good. Not that there's a lot I could do to change it at this point, but check, check. that'd be cool. We got you. Can we get a tour of the Peak Design office? Ah, oh, man, I spent so long setting up the camera. <laughs> Um, better, much better than previously, which is funny because we are operating on a setup that probably cost one fiftieth. It's just a little Logitech webcam, but that's awesome. Uh, it is a pretty awesome place to work, Alvaro. We have a good time. Art is getting some stuff. Here we go. Hello, uh, everybody. So we'll wait a, a minute or two here for a few more people to log on if they want to watch and participate live. But as usual, these videos will live on the page and probably on YouTube also. Um, so it becomes a bit of a resource. I'm Lawrence, I'm the art director. I'm Art. I'm a design lead focusing on soft goods primarily. Um, we've got Jen over here who is in charge of customer satisfaction and a lot of logistics stuff. We're coming to you from the design side of our office. We got two rooms. That's how we're, we're huge now. We have two whole rooms. Two whole rooms. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, we're still very much crammed in our little office here, uh, which is kind of how we like it. So, All right. Hovering at about 200 people watching. We're two minutes in. I think we should just get going. Um, cool. So we can take questions from you guys live. Some people have already put questions up. We've also got a small list of things we're gonna run through um, based just on Hicks going through the comment board. As always, a big shout out to him and Stu, his helper. Uh, makes our lives a lot easier. There's a lot for us to do here in San Francisco. So Hicks is better equipped and more patient with you guys on the message board. Um, and it's super helpful for us. We see all of that stuff. Uh, he is a full-time employee of Peak Design, so treat him with the respect he deserves, but we give him a little bit of a hard time because he likes it. <laughs> um, cool. So should we go, why don't we go through the questions? Easy on the shaking the table there. Oh. So it's linked to the camera. Yeah. Um, which question should we start with? Should we go through the list that we compiled? I think you can start with shoe caps because I think it doesn't get a lot of love and a lot of people talk about Cool, great. Yeah, no, uh, <clears throat> we actually didn't really have uh, good samples of shoe pouch until just recently. We were finishing uh, a lot of details. So I think even in the video and on the Kickstarter page, there's only like a couple of vague photos. So. Um, this guy here is uh, is 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 the real deal, though. Uh, so you can see it packs down very very small uh, into this nice little soap bar size thing here. Um, the fabric that we're using on this is a uh, 70D uh, heather. It's super crazy lightweight. Um, so you just unfold that guy here like so, Oops, inside out, and uh, that's your shoe pack. Uh, it's got a single uh, big zip here uh, that kind of wraps around the edges of the bag. So I got a pair of Lawrence's uh, shoes here. Throw those guys in. The trick to being an art director is to have funny colored shoelaces. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. They're like, oh, this guy's edgy. He must know something. I don't. You should see my sunglasses. <laughs> so, um, so there you go. Uh, you know, there's room to spare in there. Those are kind of mid-height uh, men's shoes. What are those? Number size tens or something? Or? Yeah, like 11s, 11, 12s, 11, 12, somewhere in there. 12 and a half. Um, so uh, we, you can definitely. We have been doing testing on these just size-wise, and uh, we're pretty confident that it'll fit the vast majority of uh, people's shoes out there. If you've got uh, really large uh, feet, or you're, you know, like big clunky giant like 
boots. Yeah. Then, uh, you know. Because these are right now with the bottom spacing I wouldn't down. be traveling with those personally, but. <laughs> you <laughs> you know, do you. You do you. That's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, these are, these are in here right now with the soles pointed down. But you also can kind of, depending on the height of the shoe, put them sort of side by side. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different ways. And so with this mid-size height shoe, there's still a little bit of room to squeeze some more stuff in there. Cool. Uh, features on the outside. It's got attachment points. Yeah, so uh, we've got uh, some of the external carry uh, strap attachment points, which is actually kind of nice. Uh, we don't really recommend lashing too many of these pouches to the outside of the bag just because... They, I mean, I, I think people will do it, certainly. We just, they're not really designed for that, like shape-wise, so that things get a little bit awkward. But this bag actually works pretty well uh, lashed down to the top of the bag uh, with the external carry straps that will be coming out of these pockets. Uh, unfortunately, we're, that hardware is coming in this week, so I don't have uh, any of those straps to, to point that out. Uh, but we've, we've messed around with that, and we think it works pretty well. Um, it also has the uh, the C clip uh, loop attachments. I'm gonna put this on your white shirt. It's a nice background. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's the C clip loop attachments here, uh, so that you can secure this on the inside of the bag. Should you want to, is that something that I think people will oh. really want to do? And does it, <laughs> and does it uh, add like a ton of utility? I think the answer is not really. But we kind of wanted to be future forward and progressive with this and give you some 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 attachment points. So here's a couple of C-clips on as, this guy here, like so. As a lot of you guys remember, the C-clips, uh, the, one of the big ways, in the context in which we talk about them often is with the uh, camera cubes, which we're actually not gonna talk too much to, about today. Um, as I saw Hicks was mentioning on the comments in there, we are making the focus of today's hangout more about travel, uh, some of these the other accessories, some workflows regarding travel and packing. We're going to do a camera cube focused hangout probably next week. Um, don't quote me on that yet. I'll we'll get with the whole team and we'll figure out when. But and part of the reason for that is that we have our basically final production uh, uh, cubes coming in. Uh, when the uh, we've got half our team uh, in Vietnam right now doing kind of final. Uh, Final development and kind of getting the lines uh, up and rolling uh, for production, which is great. Um, so we wanted to just have like final, final stuff to be able to show everyone rather than kind of piecing together all of our weird prototypes that we have around the office. So for sure. Yep. Big shout out to Vic and Lockett and Joey and Rachel who are so, over in Vietnam right now. Here's uh, kind of what that the shape of this thing looks packed out. I'm, as a as a bag designer, I actually really like how this thing came together. Um, it's got it's all it's a single piece of fabric, um, and it's all got this kind of X shaped darting thing here. And what that does is makes for a really long zipper path, so you get really nice big access. So I know it's just a shoe bag, but uh, I like it. Ooh, that's, uh, I don't. It has C clip attachment points. Um, At I, this point, the answer is no to that question. Yeah, the answer is no. I mean, it keeps the cost down. Um, I think C clips will be. I think the, the a skew you can get on its own at some point. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of stuff that we'll have to kind of feel out and develop. But honestly, there's. I think our big hesitancy to include them is this like we don't want people to feel like they I mean there's a lot of confusion around messaging around like how people are supposed to use things and if it comes with c-clips I feel like people will feel obliged to clip it into the bag and it's just not really a high level feature it's mainly just some loops that we wanted to include on there in the event that people had some weird connection thing you know we want people to like the gear to be versatile and to kind of figure out their own way to use it so For i sure. would say that is definitely a mega mega edge case like i can't, I can't even think of the benefit to doing that so yeah but that, that's the sort of thing that kickstarter backers pay attention to you guys hack stuff together you do cool stuff with it totally when it goes out into the rest of the world to the, the general buying population it, it we can't we can't message to you guys because you get it but not everyone would get it totally. so that's the sort of thing we might leave out of the final product yeah but uh if you guys think of any uh cool reasons for why you'd really want to do that like let us know we're all ears juan um, pablo amarillo is asking 
is the shoe pouch waterproof? It would be nice to use it as a dry bag. So it's not 100% waterproof, obviously, because it has a zipper. It does have a coated, I don't know if you can see that, probably not. Uh, we're using a, a coated uh, zip on that. And the fabric has a uh, silicone uh, coating uh, on it. So it is highly water resistant. Um, and we wanted to do that so that if you put some, you know, grimy shoes in there that it would keep things from leaking out. Um, the good thing about that is that everything is contained really well. The downside of that is that the ventilation isn't like spectacular on it. So there's like two schools of thought on shoe pouches. It's like either you want to be well ventilated or you want them to be isolated from the rest of your gear. We went for the isolated situation, figuring that if you want ventilation, just crack the zipper a little bit and you're doing great. So Also something, this is completely, has nothing to do with peak design, but uh, if you put your shoes into the freezer overnight, it kills a lot of the odor causing bacteria. You can also do that with your jeans. Oh yeah, you can do that with your jeans. I've never tried, Tom told me, Tom's got, uh, you know how easy it is to put that <laughs> little shoe pouch back in the little pouchy thing. You show how easy it is to put it back. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, the, uh, the stuff situation is great, um, and it has a little loop on here, uh, so you can kind of, like, throw a little carabiner clip on there and kind of... Um, we think a lot of people will use this beyond just this bag. It's obviously great for the travel bag, but if you're, like, you know got your kind of daily gym routine or something like that and you're carrying an everyday backpack or some other gym duffel thing this is a great little deployment uh pouch for shoes mm -hmm. so um it's actually a really the I, I will say this the the packing cubes are awesome and they're also extremely lightweight uh you know this is like about as light as we would want to go on material for this kind of thing or else i mean it's it's they're super durable and i feel very confident in it but it is a very minimalist uh, bag. However, it is very full featured. It's got the, uh, the, the tear open access. It's got the expansion. It has the clean and dirty side. So all of that equals, you know, a little bit more bulk than the, than the shoe pouch. So if you're a just, you know, ride or die minimalist packer and you just want to go really serious and simple, the shoe cube is actually a pretty good mega mega minimalist packing cube but it so. has no compression, no has, no compression no has zero features it's just a really well built super tiny volume that weighs i don't know what this thing weighs like nothing it's uh yeah like <laughs> asterisk probably uh, probably less than your toothbrush honestly now people are going to ask <sighs> to get the we got a scale <laughs> grab it so it's the other side of the office uh, I will use the packing cubes personally. They're still really light, but you know, I'll you know, what I will do is I'll use this as like a backpacking, uh, like packing cube for sure. That would be that would be rad. I think uh, what I when it, so we've started to kind of put together what we personally want here in the office for our personal kits. I'm gonna get a couple of these. Um, all of a sudden, I just really felt like I was on like the home shopping network. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take oh my a couple. God. It looks amazing on you right now. This is great. <laughs> uh, but if it's when it's packed down, all of a sudden, you know, if you get somewhere and you acquire more things, uh, you've got a way to carry them immediately. Yep. Which and, is pretty sweet. And by the way, the the little uh, external carry loops on those are uh, you can throw anchors on those and carry them with one of our uh, our camera straps, uh, or you can actually clip the external carry straps that come with the backpack uh, onto that and do, it's kind of a shorter strap, but you can do like a little shoulder uh, sling strap with that as well for kind of overflow mode. So not bad. very versatile little piece. We almost didn't call it the shoe pouch as a result of that. We wanted to call it like, call these like the minimalist packing cubes and, or this is the compression packing cubes and this is the like minimalist packing cube, but we decided to just go with the main focus of the product, which is putting your shoes on. Shoot. Um, it, uh, Jen is asking if it is machine washable. So it's a silicone coating on the fabric. Um, I 
I would go with hand washing on it just because it is a technical coating on a fabric. It's not like it, it's not an apparel coating. It's a like an outerwear coating. Um, we'll run some more tests on that and see. Uh, I just I, I can't 100% say yes. I like I have very good faith in the durability of it and everything like that. But detergents and heat are weird things. So uh, I would I would just go for a turn it inside out and scrub it some down. warm water and mild detergent in your bathroom sink is super easy. I don't even think you'll need to go that aggressive with it. Um, Jen was saying like Nick, uh, Nick wax, like uh, tech wash stuff um, because this doesn't have uh, and doesn't need a, uh, got it. Uh, well, a water resistant coating and like the big reason that you would do sport wash and like some of the more technical garment washes is to protect that. Um, I mean, it certainly wouldn't hurt if you had it, but I don't think you need to go out and buy a new detergent to wash this thing by any means. Yeah. Cool. I think we, that, that should do it for the shoe pouch. Um, we're going to update the page with some beautiful pictures of it and all that kind of stuff. It's been sort of, woefully underexplained on there, but consider this the beginning of that. Cool. Um, um, there's one question from Jerry about the, the tech pads will fit a Sony A6 So they're not really, you talked about camera gear too much, but say you don't want, you're not getting any of the camera cubes. Like how can you use the tech pouch if you wanted to carry one camera or if someone else has to go fit a small iPad? Um, and if you just wanted to use the tech pouch for your camera and tech gear, yeah, no, I, I mean, absolutely. I think like the tech patch is a super versatile tool uh, for for packing gear. It is lightly padded, so there is an element of protection to it. Um, what it doesn't have is depth, and that's where what really defines a camera bag is the ability to fit a camera with a lens on it. So if you have a rangefinder with a really short lens, or even like a Sony like A6000 series thing with kind of like their pancake lens or a Canon uh, G series or that kind of thing. Hell yeah, like 100%. Or you know what actually I think a lot of people are gonna be using this for is GoPros with like all of, and or action camera stuff with like all of this crazy amounts of accessories and cords and clips and all that stuff that goes along with it. This, I mean, I don't know if you can see in there. This just organizes huge amounts of tiny gear so well. Um, you have visual access to everything. You can fit your hands into everything really, really well. You don't have to get all crazy with wrapping your cords up. You can kind of just stuff things in there and they kind of find their own place and sort themselves out when you zip it up. So this is uh, actually my stuff in here. <laughs> it's, it's like hard to describe how amazing this is to just not have to separate, or for the cables to be separate. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we got Sony A6000, an old Ricoh rangefinder. Cool. So one thing for sure, the make a little room here. power know. blocks, these things, and you know, mice, non-compressible items, these take up a lot of space. I think it's tough to carry a camera and stuff like this at the same time. Yeah, uh, like power bricks plus camera, probably not gonna be a thing, but like, there's the A6000 with the, or whatever this is, yeah, the A6000 with the, uh, uh, the pancake on there, and there's definitely, you know, plenty of, and, and tons of other stuff in there, so there you go. Uh, this, by the way, this pouch does have anchor attachment uh, points on it and C-clip attachment points in the same way that the shoe pouch does so that you can... Uh, this one, I can see a use case for uh, clipping it to the inside of the bag. Does it come with the C-clips? No. If you really want C-clips, um, let us know, and we can we'll we'll we'll, we'll work something out. I think uh, yeah. like we're not trying to leave anyone hanging. We're just trying to get realistic about, you know, not making a bunch of crap that people aren't going to use. And it, it's it's an edge case for most people to and want control to the cost the too. You know, stuff's expensive to make, and passing yeah. on that cost to you guys kind of sucks especially if not everyone's going to use it. Yeah. But if you do make a noise about it, we're in the point, we're at a point right now where we can start to think about like, what are the accessory SKUs and products that'll be available and what yeah, packages absolutely. can you get and absolutely. that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, as far as like passing on costs, like the, our cost of these products just for 
FYI, are directly tied to, to to the cost of manufacturing them. So, I mean, this pouch is what sixty bucks MSRP, which you know is not like on the cheap end for a tech organizer by any means, but it's directly tied to how much it costs us to make because it's like all crazy top end premium materials and laser cut construction and it's just expensive to make. Mm -hmm. Cool. Sweet. Uh, any other tech pouch questions while we've got one out? Um, so I'm going to ask you if you put an iPad in there. <laughs> I, uh, I, don't think, I mean, maybe one of those like paper wipes. Is that the small Kindle? I don't think we've got one in here though. Yeah, you know, we can. Uh, here, let me. I have a tape measure right here, um, so we can actually give you like what I think the max dimension would be for that, and it looks here. like it's about 19 centimeters by 12 centimeters. You could probably go a little bit bigger than that, but that's. Yeah, you, I mean, you could go a little bit bigger than that, but that's that's the size essentially of like the footprint of the back of the bag, and that is a little bit smaller because everything tapers in. Um, yeah, like an iPad Mini. Um, I don't think you would be able to fit a regular iPad in here. It's just a little, a little mini. small. Uh, we had a question about the C clips. Uh, if they're in a position where it's beneficial for the side access. And I assume that means if you mounted this in the 45 liter, mm -hmm. which maybe to make that a little more tangible, we can just show you guys how that's envisioned. Sure. I'm totally down to try it. Uh, I'm not sure I've messed around with it for side access, which is kind of surprising. Be crazy. Well, we're talking setting that up. Can you talk a lot about it? And a lot of people ask, like, why the flaps, the side access flaps on the backpack open up towards you as sure. opposed to away from you? It's like, especially for the everyday backpack, you know, as far as getting into the, um, uh, the like pockets and stuff, and then here for travel, like, as a way people said, like, having it open probably like, kind of protects and hides your stuff. So I just wanted to speak to the school about as to why we want to have it open sure. upwards on both this bag and the everyday one. Roger. Uh, so it's going the opposite direction of where you'd want to go for side access, but for the main back access, it is going in the right direction. Um, so in order to accommodate both, we'd need to have mounting points in a couple of different locations, and I think the, the bag would start to get a little bit molly webbing-y at that point. Um, uh, as far as Jen's uh, as far as Jen's question about why the zipper path goes the way it does, um, that's a very good question. Um, the the big reason for it is because of the load. Um, so I spent a lot of time thinking about the, like the load path that exists, and the reason that the zippers go this direction on our everyday bag and on this bag is because essentially when I'm wearing this backpack, you can see the load from the straps carries <laughs> as you can see here <laughs> uh, the uh, why don't I put it on a new point uh, okay. <laughs> as you can see here <laughs> on the backpack on the backpack strap uh, so the 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 backpack strap load carries directly over your shoulder and down into the main backpack here, and that and basically the the zipper path is done to follow that load. If the zipper path was uh, so basically the load goes like this on the bag, right? And if the zipper path crosses that, then when things on the bag start to settle and sag, as they do with a soft good. Uh, then it puts uh, pressure perpendicularly to the zipper, if that makes sense. So when the bag is under load and the zipper is going like this, it would be really, really difficult to open the zipper. Whereas the bag is under load like this, it's super easy to get into the zipper because it's all in line. Does that make sense? I think that does. Make sense. So it's a bit of a bummer that when it's tight up on you, it doesn't open away from you. We get that is a nice thing, and that's why we do that on our sling bags uh, as well. But we felt that it was better to have that load kind of aligned with the zipper path. <laughs> Someone's playing the fart noises over the stereo. So, didn't check how loud 
Oh my god, I wish I could turn the camera around because Tom is losing it. It's definitely him. No. Alish jumped. Alish. It was so loud in the. I don't know how loud that was for you, but. It was terrifying. So we have a a list of an hour of fart noises that periodically someone throws on the uh, on the speakers here. So. We've gone through the entire hour before, by the way. <laughs> One of the worst hours of my life. I've also found that when it opens this way, it's just easy to get into it. You don't have to like keep holding it open. I don't know, it just kind of holds itself. You can get in and out of it. I, 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 in using it, I've found no problems. Uh, and I think with the benefits you just mentioned, it's like a, it seems like a really great workflow, a way to do it. So um, the uh, some people have asked about that as far as far as why we didn't put uh, pocket organization on the inside of these flaps as well. I've heard that question a couple of times, uh, like we do on the everyday backpack. And the reason for that is that we had some on there, and we messed around with that for a couple of prototypes, and uh, it ended up being very um, frustrating because it works great. It, there, it was difficult to set up a pocket layout that worked well when you're going on the side access and from the back access because you're, it's completely different direct, like ideal directions of which way the pockets would be going. So you are guaranteed to be locked out of a pocket depending on how you got into the bag. And it was super frustrating. So we decided to go towards more of a front uh, panel organization. Mm -hmm. Saves weight, less cost. Cool. Can you cool show a little bit more about the pockets that are in the bag since so the organization panel? I think like that's kind totally. of hard to show when it's in the picture. It's a little confusing. So, so there, there's the there's two main places where you're going to organize small stuff in this bag. One of them is this quick stash pocket here, which has a soft liner for sunglasses, or if you want to do you know kind of wallet keys, whatever. Uh, uh, Boarding pass is like great when you're going through TSA. You just like stuff all that kind of pocket garbage in there. Um, and then the other one is uh, up top here, which has these air bladders in here right now. Um, and those have a couple of uh, extendable pointer uh, pockets <laughs> slash pen pockets. And um, you put your vape in there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and some kind of big dump pockets on the side, uh, and that's basically designed with this uh, the zipper path that kind of does this angle. So the idea is that I actually recommend leaving that pocket open, uh, that zipper open. I know that sounds crazy, but and then at that point you just have one zip, and you pull this open a little bit, and then you've got great access to the uh, to the inside of that pocket there, and then you can zip it off if you want to secure it. With both the front access zipper and I think the rear access zipper, you guys might have seen on the instructional that Vic and I did, I really like leaving these traveling zippers at the top because that essentially gives you quick top access to the main volume and to the front volume using these uh, without us having to put in some sort of dedicated zipper to add weight and cost again there. It does double duty and it's way easier if you just leave them there sitting for you. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. It. So the other uh, the other organization element in here is uh, uh, I got that in the here and then here also. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so there's four main pockets on the inside of the bag. One, two, three, four. Uh, the top ones are mesh, so you kind of get light entering the bag if you have uh, both the front and the bag open or the side or something like that. Um, but basically, you, these are flat, but they're very big, so they hold quite a bit of volume on their own um, uh, pockets there. Um, and same down here. And then what's kind of cool is from the other side, um, there is an additional zipper. So from there, Lawrence can... So from this side, I'm able to uh, get into the pocket. See, here, just tilt it over here too. Yeah, sure. So from this side, I'm able to get into that pocket, and from the front side, I'm able to get into that pocket. So again, because this bag has back and front access, that's really nice to be able to kind of 
basically there, there's never a situation where you're completely locked off from a pocket um, where, you, where you can't get to it, unless of course the bag is completely packed out and you, you know, can't rifle through it. But really the layout is all designed around the main volume being hammer gear, clothing, and kind of like point A to point B kind of stuff. And then the uh, front panel being for kind of like your working organization items you need quickly, things that you want to be able to have, you know, get to in the seat of your plane, uh, when you, you know, when your stuff in the back of the overhead bin, when I have quick access to that stuff, get your headphones, you get your neck pillow, all that. Can you show what the front part looks like when it's expanded? I think a lot of people are like confused with people think like, oh, you, you understand you can get the three cubes in the main sure. area. Yeah. So, like, what's the like max if you were living in a fully expanded? Well, let's before we expand it, let's just show storing stuff in here that's not expanded yeah. real quick. So there is a little bit of volume, and we've talked a little bit about. Do you need a small pouch in there? Um. A small pouch. Uh, yeah, I think you. Uh, it's Tommy Bahama. I, I think you could unex. Yeah, you can unexpand it as long as the stuff in the main volume isn't completely, like, packed out super hard. Um, you can you can do it. What I what I actually like to do when you're packing at the front volume and you know you're going to have a lot of stuff, is start, uh, in the expanded state. So, let's say. You start expanding, and that gives you all this extra volume. And then you pack it out. And then if you can compress it down, great. Like most times you can. Um, and if you can't, then that's fine too. You just leave it expanded. That's you know, that's that's how what it's there for. But if it is expanded, and be nice to your zipper. Like I, I like when you, like compressing stuff. Like you can really mess up a zipper. So. When it is expanded yeah. in there, could you fit a medium packing cube? Could you fit a small packing cube? Uh, you can fit a small. You can fit a medium and a small packing cube in this front volume, as long as they are not, it, it, as long as they're in their compressed state and they're not completely ballooning out. Yeah. So uh, here's. Oh, load one up. Yeah, I mean you can you can. So we'll we'll show you that now. Yeah, giving sort of max carry uh, when you when you start talking about like oh how many shirts can it fit and all this kind of stuff like we can get some numbers and we do um, man with soft goods you can just like crank on this stuff and really yeah just go kind of crazy kind of depends on like what level of density you want your bag to be yeah at a certain point like honestly if you're traveling with camera gear and clothing and you're packing really really efficiently and the bag is in its expanded state. I mean, frankly, like I would not want the bag to get any heavier at that point and not have a full, like, 65 liter hiking backpack hip belt. Like, it just it gets it it get you can get it really really heavy at that point. So we can stuff out the the full size too, uh, just to show sure that fits. Stuffed out shoe pouch with some stuff in it. Cool. So yeah, so you can see that's uh, camera gear and stuff out in the front, and then this is the expanded zone. And again, that's the medium camera cube and the small camera cube. Uh, sorry, packing mm -hmm. cubes in their uh, kind of compressed state. Uh, Let's swap out one of those for a stuffed out tech pouch to show that too. So like if you go into the top, let's see, it's fewer clothes, but you want to put some tech stuff in there. Okay, that can go right in there. Cool. Yep. You know what I think we could also do on this bag right now is, so that's the tech pouch in the front. So that works in the expanded mode. And you also could Put your packing cube back in. So I've got a medium and a small packing cube in the expanded front compartment. Then I can go back to my main volume, which has a medium camera cube and a pretty stuffed out shoe pouch. Stuff the tech pouch into the top. There's always a little bit of room. Yeah, so the, usually the, the sizing of the bag is actually, it's the size, it's kind of, 
like <laughs> crazy matrix of sizing <laughs> requirements to like figure out the size of our like official standard hacking cube unit, which is basically the size of the small packing cube and the expanded small camera cube. Small camera expanded cube and the expanded packing cube. My apologies. Um, and and that's actually so the three camera cubes is actually based around uh, the international max carry on for in some places. It, it, you know, carry on is subjective. What that means, it's a little bit dependent on uh, what kind of planes you're flying on and what part of the world. But 20 inches is the max in some places. So it's actually based around 20 inches. And the reason for that is that. All right. Uh, <laughs> The reason for that is that we wanted to be future forward with the gear in the event that we, you know, let's say did uh, some roller bags in the future, for example. Um, we wanted to uh, be able to get three packing cube units into a international size carry-on. The reason this bag is not international carry-on is frankly because it's a backpack and just the, the leniency around being able to get an oversized backpack onto the plane, we've found is, I mean, like, we have people here who travel with a 26 inch bag, this is 22, and like, have never had an issue with getting it onto a plane. It's just one of those things that, you know, kind of depends on the mood of your flight attendant, I suppose, and, and, and what airline that, you're flying. And I know, good. I know some people have been concerned about that. And like, honestly, you're gonna have to make your own judgments about that. And by the way, this when this is expanded is beyond max carry on size as well. And you should, you know, consider that as well. Like, this isn't a max carry on size bag. It's something that we've been calling carry on plus trademark. Um, and that's basically means that the bag is carry on, but Carry on only matters for two points during your trip. The when the five minutes when you're getting on the plane, and the five minutes when you're getting on the plane to go home, right? <laughs> uh, and then the whole rest of the time, like the sky's the limit on the on the amount of crap you want to put in your backpack. So uh, there's a lot of great little hacks around that. I actually recommend like, let's say you're going somewhere that's cold and you've got a lot of cold weather gear, like wear your big jacket when you're getting on the plane and then you can throw it in the backpack like or throw it under your seat or whatever and then the whole rest of the time you've got that extra volume that you can use or let's you say have the backpack plus your like personal item sure get on the plane but then once you're off the plane and you're traveling around you can put that personal item in the backpack and that takes a bit. exactly yeah so take your tech pouch and your watch pouch out as your personal item take your Take your camera cube out as your personal item and stash this thing. Like uh, it's pretty easy to find little loopholes around that stuff. So we wanted to give you the flexibility and versatility beyond just being beholden to the, you know, the airline industrial complex trying to tell us how to pack our gear. Don't let the man get you down. Don't let the man get you down. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask like what the bag looks like and what you can get in there in the compressed mode. So like if you're in compressed mode, can you still fit in those three cubes? Can you fit in less? Like what, what could you fit uh, in? When you're in the top <laughs> compressed mode. Yeah. So the top compressed mode is all about when the bag does not have, is basically two thirds so or cubes. less full. So you can fit two cubes. Yeah, so you can put two cubes and still go into compression mode. Two small cubes, one medium cube. Yeah, sorry. Or, you know. Exactly. The, the two equivalent. Two cube units. Two cube units. Two cube units. Plus two cube the units. Pouch, uh, yeah, yeah, I think we show it we'll try. It'll be a little bit borderline. So what's interesting about the snaps, they've, ah. we've, we've tuned them pretty awesome, I think. And this is yeah, they, they're actually them. not tuned well in the Kickstarter video. Oh, sorry. I guess you guys are out that way. And these, this is pre-production. It's newer than the yeah. video, but it's yeah, still so this is a little pre-production. a little weird. See a little cam up here. There you go. Kind of compressed down like that. So there is a tech pouch in there. Yeah, in the side of it, people can see what it looks like in compression. What's nice is in the compression, you can still get into your side zips the way that zipper path works out. So there's your tech pouch kind of hiding in there, and there's this. Um, so, so that is compressed. One thing to note, though, is that if there 
isn't anything in this or there's you know this this fills out the space really well the camera cube if you have like a jacket and a couple of layers and a tuck pouch or something in there um the way that, that compression and the way that this zipper gusseting kind of thing works is let's just show that a little bit the bag does allow itself to collapse uh pretty nicely um and naturally looking so you know when you don't ha when you have less in there it will look even uh smaller than that, can you still access so the that, uh, top access or the organization panels uh, like, can you still get into your organization panels when you're in compressed mode? Yes, yeah, you so can. Awesome. Everything, the great, the great thing about the compression mo mode versus doing like compression straps on the outside of the bag, that's the way that like most uh, bags out there han like handle kind of compression, is that because the, the way that we've done the compression and the expansion, all of the zipper paths on the bag still work, which is awesome. So we basically utilized this like little negative space and built the bag around this this like compression zone up here and then built everything else around that, if that makes sense. Which also feeds back to your zipper path question earlier about the direction that the side axis opens. Right. By having this sort of nice organic line here, you're also able to really naturally get this fold down there. And so that in compressed state, it's not just as functional as you just described, but it like it looks good. Totally. It's a good looking pack. And we, I, like, uh, I was just talking about Max, one of our engineers uh, earlier, and he was saying that he's planning on using this as his daily carry bag uh, just because he likes the option to, like, go grocery shopping on the way home and, like, really load the thing out. And, um, I mean, it looks. When I see it, some people how tall you are, I'm it looks six feet tall. Yeah. I'm five six, so it it looks like a bigger bag on me because it is a bigger bag. Um, even in the compression mode, you can check that out. Um, so you know, there's a there's definitely like a torso sizing thing on for some people about where whether they you know want to consider doing that as more of a a, a daily carry bag. Um, but yeah, it's okay. What do you think, guys? But I mean, I, I I'm really small. I'm like top or like m bottom five percentile for dudes. I think five 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 six. You just making one hundred and twenty five pounds of fury. We're not doing weights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you guys talk a little bit more about the other stash pockets on the sides of the bag and the luggage tag as well? Really uh, yeah. So, got your open sort of side pockets here with a gusseted back, which allows you to accommodate some pretty big size things. And those pockets will each contain external carry straps, is that correct? Uh, yeah, the plan right now for external carry straps is one in the side, one in each of the side pockets, and then uh, two down here. So you'll have four external carry straps total, just like the everyday bag. So that'll allow you to do, you know, Tripod on each side. Should you need two tripods, uh, or yeah, a tripod and a big—I don't know what you're carrying on the side that you need two of these things. But we'll give it. And so the zip pocket on the side it uses the same volume. Uh, oh yeah. You're talking about like if you have a water bottle in there, can you still use that zip pocket? Right. Or? So yeah, there's been a little bit of confusion about that. Um, basically, the way that these zip pockets on the side work is that they are essentially making use of the same volume. So if you have something thin stashed in there, yes, you can do both, but they're really designed to take advantage of a volume that may or not be utilized depending on if you're carrying a water bottle or not. So it's a way to get dual purpose out of the same part of the bag without having to like add in extra weight and features and stuff like that. So. Basically, I, I, I don't know if this is like, I, I'm hoping this isn't misleading. It's just like kind of complex to explain it all. But I really do consider these side pockets to be an either or with the water bottle pockets. If you have a big water bottle pocket in here, it's basically, you know, taking up the volume that this little stash pocket would be occupying. Is that like a bummer? Uh, 
I guess if like you are just using the shit out of these things and you're using water bottles, that's like not ideal, but there's so many other great places to stash small items. I like, I, I think it's a plus to have the, the versatility in those pockets yeah, personally. Otherwise, we could have just only offered one stash, you know, one stash, but instead we offered some both. So I'm, you yeah. know, yeah, they're both it's on each side. side. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the, really the only time you can't, you wouldn't be able to use these is if you're carrying two water bottles or a water bottle and a tripod or a water bottle and some other bulky object in this pocket, which is possible, still, but I think it's pretty rare. Small items in there, like yeah, and you can still get small, you know, there's still, it's not like I can't get anything in here. It's just that, you know, it, yeah, it's vape, shared space. So. Put your vape pin in there. Can you show the ID pocket? Yeah, the ID pocket. Um, so some of the uh, reviews out there, I think like one of the first reviews I read was like concerned about this little pocket because it didn't have a closure on it. This one does not have a closure on it, but the final bags will have a little little mini patch of Velcro in there to keep your card in. And then we're going to give you a little ID card uh, with the bag. So that pocket is this little hidden stash guy there and um, it has a little international internationally recognized ID tag logo on it which we invented uh, for uh, people to spot it and even when the straps are sewed and everything that little tag sticks out on the side there nicely. And we're going to be providing a card that people can fill out or they can use a business card? Yeah, it's business card size. So you can put in your own business card or uh, you can fill out the little card that we give you should you not have your own business card. As Most many... people probably don't have their own business yeah. card, which is cool. That's fine. That's that's cool. Yeah, don't let the man bring it down. Yeah. Uh, there's been a few questions about the packing cubes and the dirty versus clean. A lot of people have asked, like, is the dirty volume smaller than sure. clean, or like, how does that work? Um, the way it works is the um, the dirty volume is essentially the same size. So it's, uh, I can't really, it's pretty difficult to show it. If I can peel this back, um, you can see that that uh, dirty volume is pleated. There's this pleat right here. And that pleat is basically this similar uh, volume to, um, to this uh, pleat depth here. So uh, when it fills up, um, right now the, the, that dirty volume is slammed all the way down to the bottom here because it's the same shape as this. As you fill it and the top empties, it will shift over to the other side. And then if it's expanded, it will start to like turn inside out basically and take up the volume on the other side. It is slightly less volume than the entire cube filled out and the reason for that is that we didn't want to create a bunch of extra bulk in there so if like you can't pack the entire volume out with the with the dirty stuff but like you get like 90 percent of the way there and the thinking is like if you're on your like at that point you're basically on your last pair of clothes and you always have the option to just like switch everything put your last dirty in exactly yeah totally so um it's definitely, you can hold a lot in the dirty side, quite a bit in the dirty side. Uh, another question, is there any place to hang my keys like in the EDB or the messenger bags? Yeah, um, that's, you know. It's we a, debated that. We debated that a bunch. Um, it's not, uh, what it does have is loop locations so that you can tether keys inside of the pockets or you can take the, uh, key tether from the everyday backpack if that's some, if you're wanting to use it as a daily carry thing for travel though the only situ like what we were trying to think of for travel is like what what is the key like what do you want to do with your keys when you're traveling and for us it was really just when you leave you want to be able to put them somewhere safe and some bags have like little like key clip places and stuff like that but there's so many zippered pockets in the bag we just kind of figured like just put them in a zipper pocket and then we just save 
save you the weight and the extra little dangly thing that most but people aren't the handles on, the on the side could you if you want to we do have the key feathers available on the website so if you wanted to grab a key feather off the side could you oh, yeah all yep. the back in the pocket? yeah it works exactly the same the side pocket layout is it's not exactly the same because it has the hidden stash pockets and the, they are different but they're they're very similar in their setup um some questions about camera cubes and stuff, but I don't know if we want to go into that since we're going to be doing a camera cube specific hangout. I think uh, we'll just we'll keep there, putting those. Is, is, is there any kind of? I, I I'm happy to get into them a little bit. I just don't want to get like too into the weeds for because our next um, thing yeah, is going to be all about ten that. minutes. But there's one question from Juan that has had like ten upvotes. So he said, "I'm still trying to figure out what would be best for me between a medium and small camera cube versus a medium and a five liter sling. Also, mm -hmm. would a tech pouch fit in both of these combinations?" So, so. Uh, so there's a few people that want to. So it was a small camera cube versus a media camera cube. No, medium camera cube, and then what you do versus medium camera cube with five liter or small. Oh, I see. Uh, medium is the, the, the constant, and then sure. I mean, small cube and then. Tech Let's show a five liter sling here. That seems uh, valuable. Uh, I'm not sure we have one in the room right now. Uh, Lawrence is going to go grab one. Um, the they effectively carry the same amount of gear and they both fill up the bag quite well. The five liter sling is a little bit bigger um, than the, it, it, you'll, you'll see the size difference when he brings it out. It's actually a little bit, just a touch narrower and a little bit taller and about the same depth. And personally, I think I would go for a medium cube and a five liter sling because the sling is such a great, deployable little day bag. Um, there's certainly, you know, a little bit more cost associated with that. Um, but uh, you can, there are um, anchor attachment points on these as well. And so you can carry this as a little day sling as well. It's just, it's like ergonomically, it's fine. It's okay. Some people are going to love it for that, but it's not as good as the five liter sling because the five liter sling was purpose built for that. So, um, I think that, I mean, I, I, I hope that kind of helps answer those questions a little bit, but, uh, that, oh, that's 10 liter. Yeah, I'm still looking for All right. Five liter. Anyone got a five liter sling kicking around? We'll grab one of those. Stand by. Do you need a 10 at all? I think I have one uh, over, by my, over by my desk. I think there's a couple. Oh, we got one. Yeah. We got one. All right. Cool. So there's the medium packing cube in here, and then there is the uh, five liter sling. So you can kind of see uh, the size difference between the two. They're roughly the same depth. The I think this is a little bit deeper, um, and height wise, uh, this is just a touch taller. And the reason for that is so that we you can fit an iPad uh, in here. You will not be able to fit an iPad in here for various reasons, but this is kind of designed around an iPad size. And it is slightly, slightly narrow, narrower, but not, not by a ton. So the way that it fits into the bag really nicely um, is like so. Can you still get a tech pouch in there too? Uh, it's a it's not bad. It kind of depends on how packed out the uh, five liter sling is to be, and the tech pouch is. Here, here it is, but there's, you know, I don't have a lot in the five liter sling, so it is compressing a little bit. Um, but you could always put that tech pouch in the front of the bag as well, like we were pointing out. Um, let's see if I can pull this guy out. You want to fill it with some stuff? Here? Cameras. Cameras. <laughs> hey, we have this. Five D Mark IV. Nice. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's. I don't know that I would, you know, feel comfortable recommending that you can fit. Like, I can do it, but it's pretty snug. You know, I, I think some people would be dissatisfied with that fit, but for others, I think it'd be okay. But if you had a yeah. mirrorless and it's short lenses. And 
Do you think you could put the five liter sling in the front of the backpack? Um, I don't. You could probably squeeze the five ugh, borderline. I don't know. Uh, it'd be tight for sure. I think you might be able to do it expanded, but it it's it's not going to be pretty. Uh, we can try it. I'm going to try it. While well, we got the back open real quick, people wanted to see the yeah, 10 liter. 10, if you wanted to take sure. 10 liter with you, what's your option? I grabbed sure. one without a strap on it. Honestly, so here's here's how here's how I, I, I tr here's how I travel with this backpack. When I need to bring a lot of stuff, I bring this guy and I bring this guy or the five liter sling and I just carry these as my personal item and I carry this as my uh, carry-on. And that some people are like, they want like just one bag, but this bag, once you get the strap like fairly tightened down, I just slip, this doesn't have a strap on it <laughs> somehow, but uh, so I can't tell you about how to do it, but basically uh, like this, uh, I just carry it on one shoulder with the backpack and it works great. I did six weeks in uh, Europe, like the 10 liter is also very compressible. A year ago, like right? that. So it's you great. could take the dividers out, flatten it down, and basically put that in the, the front part of the bag. If you want to compress that, just take it along as your day bag, not packed in the back. Yeah, the, the, the 10 liter sling does compress uh, pretty well uh, if you. Uh, Put the put the uh, the dividers down. There might be an air pocket. Uh, yeah, there's dividers and stuff in here right now, but it does it does fold pretty flat uh, once you take everything out. As far as how it fits inside the bag, uh, not great, honestly. Um, I I it won't go this direction. I mean, well, <laughs> it doesn't go this direction well. You can see how I'm like bowing the top of the bag out, uh, and I'm probably if I zip that up, it probably will. <laughs> squish the sides of the bag um yeah i can't like i can close it but i think you'd have you'd have a hard time getting much else in there just because it's kind of deforming the bag we're not recommending that. so i would not recommend the 10 liter sling to go inside inside this travel backpack um cool and like is that something that in the future we would like change the size of the 10 liter sling to fit with this and change the size of the five liter sling to fit with this better? And the answer is no, because this is built around a 13 inch MacBook Pro and this is built around an iPad. And those are the things that define the size and shape of these bags, unfortunately. So. I think if you do already have a 10 liter and you want to take it along as your day bag, if you don't want to use the compressed backpack, you can flatten it and take it along in its compressed state in the bag in the front pocket. Yes, and stuff. sure, if absolutely. That's, if that's what your goal is to have a yeah. 10 liter as your day bag. Yeah, you yeah. can pack it in, but just in its fully like compressed pack down state, not yeah. packed down. Yeah, totally. Packed down 10 liter. That's cool. Uh, I love the five liter sling. I use that all the time. I shoot on pretty short lenses. So it works really well for me with that 5D. Uh, and it just fits so snugly into this bag. Yeah. And that's a, you know, this bag's a joy to carry. It really is. Like, just wraps around your body real nicely. And then it's about two minutes left. Cool. Um, what else we got? Somebody wants to know if you need the waist dimensions for the waist strap. And kind of along with that, what's your experience with this bag for me? Waist strap size, I think we're that's growing from the pre production versions. Uh, yeah, um, we I, know I had some people that because they tried it on the store and it was pretty small, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We added we added more length to it uh, since then. Uh, I can give uh, man, I would really have to dig around. Uh, in my design files on my computer to get final dimensions because this is not going to be final dimensions on that. Um, I think, but we will update the page. I, I know that we are. I, yeah, I can't remember if the final size we were trying to fit was a 44 inch circumference, or if the updated, or if the that was the previous, and then we went even further than that. Which is so different. It's from at least 44 inch uh, circumference on the waist belt, and the reason, like, we felt comfortable. I know that we wanted to give a bunch of extra webbing because there's a really great place built into the waist straps to stow extra webbing so people like myself with a really small waist aren't going to be penalized with all this extra webbing flopping around. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. And with the waist belt, like what, what do you have to say about for it for like you're using it yeah. like for hiking? Totally. Like so this is a like 
I, I the, the kind of category that I put this in is like an adventure travel bag. And that means that it has the padded waist belt. And by the way, that padded waist belt, because it's on these uh, rotating uh, straps, when you walk, your hips actually move independently from the rest of your body. And that can really create huge pressure and uh, uh, it makes your your hip flexors super tired and it, it wears you out really quick so a lot of like the best hiking packs out there will have a rotating hip belt as a result of that so you get that benefit from it but the things that do not make this a dedicated hiking backpack uh, that I would recommend anyone like taking on like you know 10 15 20 mile whatever like a day hikes is that the Backpack is primarily built around durability and versatility, so it's not like a super well-ventilated back panel. So, like you end up, I mean, it's not ventilated at all. Honestly, it's it's exterior fabric because the thing is designed to be checked and beat to hell and be around in ten years. That's 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 the goal with it. That being said, it's it is pretty comfortable to carry. I think it's the most comfortable bag we've made. So the, it feels awesome. And then the other thing that would uh, kind of be a nick against it for uh, being a hiking backpack is it doesn't have uh, sizing and, and, a, and or an adjustable torso to really get a super dialed in fit, which, and it doesn't have load lifters. And that is a really like, we went back and forth on that. We have prototypes that have load lifters um, and we thought about doing multiple sizes. And the reason that we didn't do that is that this bag is really, we're not expecting people to be carrying it for more than a few miles and usually in short bursts. That's just the nature of travel versus the nature of backpacking. That being said, Peter Daring took it on a 15 mile. Uh, he also went backpacking with the everyday backpack too. Yeah, yeah like he, he, he takes them out there. It's crazy, but uh, like. And he loved it. Yeah, I, I, think you could, I think you could absolutely do it and we built features in it that we wanted people to have that versatility where they felt empowered to do things like that with it. That's why it has like, you know, this, the, the harness is robust compared to a lot of travel uh, backpacks out there. But I am gonna stop short of saying, hell yeah, you should get this and it's gonna be your new like backpacking backpack this summer. Like, but you it's, could do it. it's, diff it's just not, it's just not a hiking backpack. Yeah. But if you want a one bag that could go backpacking and could totally. travel, You could take yeah. it for sure. Could, yeah, you, you absolutely could. You absolutely could. Is it going to be the best hiking backpack for you? No. It is. It is burly and it is comfortable. It protects yeah. your stuff. It's awesome for just like taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, shoving it into the top of some weird bus, and then getting on a horrible flight from here to there or whatever. Like it just like stands up to abuse. Yeah, and it and it's it's great to work out of when you're on the road. Also, mm -hmm. like as a as a photographer or just someone who's like dragging a bag with them all day, it's great for that. It's just, I mean, backpacking is just this unique thing where, like, in no other situation in life are you walking for eight hours a day with a heavy, heavy load on your back. So the requirements are just a little bit different. That's all. I think that's it. I think there, just to say that there are a lot of cam more camera specific questions, but we're kind of saving those for the next yeah. hangout. The next hangout is going to be, like we missed you. We're yeah, yeah. Next hangout is going to be all cameras. Just those hangouts, they, they end up being so much like switching between stuff and it gets really, really technical. And I want to kind of like not, you know, if people aren't, you know, wanting to ask questions in detail about the camera gear aspect, I want to be nice to those folks time. Yeah, that's all. And, and I think with camera stuff too, you know, and I know Hicks gets a lot of those questions on the comment board, but you know, check B and H or check Amazon, you can get the specs for a lot of your gear without even having to get a tape measure out uh, and do a little bit of math based on the dimensions we've put up too. Um, that's that's a pretty solid way to start determining if your stuff's going to fit in in certain ways. So extrapolate out from some of those picks we put up there. You know, we've we've got limited resources. We try and get everyone's question, but we want to make sure there's enough tools out there for you to get your questions answered. Yeah, totally. And we've got a lot of you know we've got a bunch of you know there's been questions about really specific uh, gear and lenses, and we've got like I think like the top ten lenses or something like that that people have been asking about. 
um, that we're uh, renting uh, to get in the office and do. We've already done that actually, but the cubes have changed dimensions a little bit, so we're going to get final confirmation on all that stuff. So, so we're working hard to answer your questions on all that. Cool. Uh, well, it has been about an hour, which I think means we're going to sign off here. Um, thank you so much for tuning in or watching this uh, after the fact if you're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, like we said a few times, there'll be some other video, uh, some other hangouts we do. We still have about what 30 days left on the campaign. 35 days left. Awesome. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about we still. 7,290 backers. 7,200 7, backers. Yeah, that's Almost 7,300. As always, thank you for backing. It allows us to run this company and to make this stuff. Yep. We could not do it if we were seeking other forms of investment, if we were answering to other people. They would not let Peter Daring be the boss, that is for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kickstarter is also really great. We get a lot of good questions that um, kind of either makes the design team think about, you know, whether like they're like, oh, we did think about this and, you know, why. And so it really helps us to like kind of explain our choices and why we did things and also like potentially go back to the drawing board about different things if okay. we have enough time. So for sure. It's always a really fun process. So keep your questions coming. Totally. Yeah, keep yeah the questions and just going. a little bit about that. I mean, like this, the this bag is like a culmination of a ton of direct feedback that people have given us about the everyday backpacks and using them as travel bags and spe more specific surveys that we've done to people about about travel bags in general. So like this, this whole line really is a you know, there's a lot of direct Kickstarter backer input on there. And uh, if you've taken any of our surveys and given us feedback over the years. Thank you so much. It's uh, a huge part of our uh, design process. And uh, and uh, yeah, so we hope you like this. Tom, where's your cheering thing? Oh. <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> cool, we're gonna, we're gonna boot up the air horn app here and uh, sign it <laughs> off with some enthusiastic Cheering. All right, let's hear it for Lawrence and Art. Yeah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>